Marionette is a brand new design workflow tool for Vectorworks. It's the first and only cross-platform graphical scripting or visual programming environment available in a BIM authoring software for the AEC, entertainment, or landscape industries. It enables a user with little or no programming knowledge or skills to create a custom application algorithm to explore designs, build interactive objects, and streamline complex workflows that may also include functions of the operating system and internet. Graphical scripting will play a significant role in the workflows of the future. These tools, when built into an intelligent information modeling application such as Vectorworks software, present designers with unlimited opportunities to generate, define, build, and explore form and function throughout the design process. In this first section, we'll cover the basics of the Marionette interface, nodes and connections. Marionette nodes are placed in a drawing space just like any other plugin object, and have attributes and object info that is available in the object info palette. Not only can Marionette wrap node networks into modules, it can also wrap to create an object itself. The object will exist in the file like a red symbol or a parametric plugin object, such as a door or window. It will have parameters that are editable in the object info palette. Double-clicking on the object will reveal the Marionette network. Now we'll move on to node types. When clicking on the Marionette tool in the basic toolset, a drop-down menu appears in the ribbon above. The drop-down menu has 14 categories of nodes. The categories of nodes that are used in this exercise are Input, Data Flow, Math, Object Info, Objects, Operations, and Points. Each category of node serves as a different function in a Marionette definition, much like the every word and punctuation mark serves a different function within a sentence. There are a finite number of words and punctuations, but there are an infinite number of possible sentences, just by putting different words and punctuation together in different ways. Some words are used much more often than others, and some combinations are much more common as well. The same is true of Marionette. Input nodes are parameters. They're the basis of any Marionette definition, the actual data. The input nodes used in this exercise are the int node and the real node. The int node, or integer, represents a whole number, and the real node represents a real number, any number whole or fractional. Data flow nodes are organizational nodes. They manipulate data. They can be used to create lists of, add to, subtract from, rearrange, or reorganize lists of data. Math nodes are mathematical operations for add, subtract, multiply, individual, or ranges of numbers. Object info nodes are used to extract data from objects, finding the center point of a circle, for example. Objects nodes are the nodes that are used to create standard graphical objects like rectangles, lines, arcs, and curves. They create objects from data. Operations nodes perform an action on an object, like rotate, move, or delete. While math nodes act upon data, operation nodes act upon objects. Finally, points nodes are used to create and analyze points. Point nodes are in their own separate category because they're not quite objects, nor are they quite object info. To begin, we'll provide you with all the needed nodes. All we need to do is connect them and then assign the proper values. Here we have the basics of creating a regular polygon with a controllable radius and location. For this example, we'll be making a hexagon with a radius of 3 millimeters and a location of x equals 1 and y equals 2. This simple script requires only three input nodes and one object node. Luckily, one of the nodes included in Marionette is designed to pretty much do exactly that. It only needs you to include the variables. On the top left of the regular polygon node, you'll see center PT, which simply stands for center point, if you hadn't already guessed. This will determine the center of the soon-to-be-created polygon that we have yet to make. Drag the point 2 node down and to the left of the regular polygon node. Click once on the blue reshape handle of the output of that input node, and then click on the input of the regular polygon node labeled center point, like so. The 2 in point 2 simply indicates that this node is only going to provide a 2D coordinate point, only X and Y. If this was a point 3 node, for instance, it would provide X, Y, and Z as well. For a 2D polygon, we only need X and Y. Now, select the point 2 node, and in the object info palette, enter the coordinates 1 for X and 2 for Y. Now, we need to define the radius of this polygon. Grab the real node and pull it down to the left of the regular polygon node and connect it, as you did for the previous input node, to the radius connection. 
we are using a real note instead of an integer, as we need to enter an actual distance. If you simply told it 3, then it might be 3 inches, 3 millimeters, 3 kilometers, it just doesn't know. With a real node, the value is entered is expected to be a specific type of unit, which in the case of Vectorworks documents is the default unit for the document itself. With the real node selected, we will enter 3 for its value. Since our document is set to centimeters, 3 will be taken as 3 centimeters. There's another type of input node, DIM, that allows you to determine the units of measure independently from document units. We'll use that later on. The last input the regular polygon node is waiting on is num side, which, you guessed it, is the number of sides the polygon will have when it's complete. Drag the last remaining unconnected node, int, down and to the left of the regular polygon node and connect it to the num side connection as we did in the previous two examples. Once connected, select the int node and input a value of 6 to give us a proper hexagon, 6 sides. This node network is complete, network simply being the term used to describe a series of linked nodes of any kind. But where's our polygon? To see it, right-click on any node within the network and choose Run Marionette Script. After running it, nothing on screen will change other than your selection, which will indicate a group is selected. This is the default output of a marionette script, but the more intelligent modes will be discussed later. Where is that group, you ask? at the coordinates we gave it, exactly x1 and y2. Slightly down and to the right from the node network in the exercise file. You can also find it by simply using view, zoom, and fit to objects, since the group was already selected for us automatically when we ran the script. This is a fairly simple script indeed, but it teaches the very basics of Marionette scripting. Now, experiment with the script by altering some of the input nodes and rerunning the script again to see the new modified results. If you ungroup the resulting objects, you can break them away from the script and keep them even though you might rerun the script later. If you leave it grouped, that group will instead be replaced each time you rerun the script, even if you move that group. A final note before moving on to the next chapter. The location of nodes within a node network does not really matter at all, only their connections do. The two scripts pictured below will both work exactly the same. We can move the regular polygon node to the left of these input nodes and it will still function. Now functionally, while these two are still the same, the second is visually a mess. We recommend keeping things relatively neat and tidy as possible, if for no other reason than to make editing it and understanding a marionette script easier for you and others in the future, especially if you intend to share your work. In the next section, we'll cover performing math via marionette nodes, as well as creating wrappers.